Hey again, everyone. I wanted to give you guys a little update here. So a few little random ruminations or whatnot, because uh, it's been a week where things didn't quite get off the ground as I intended to for reasons. And uh, there is a film that's very much a departure from what I kind of was uh, thinking about doing as a review earlier this week in uh, terms of a thriller as opposed to some of the sci-fi stuff I was kind of uh, throwing out there on Twitter or whatnot. If you're following me there, definitely go up at Raven's Film to check that out. That uh, every so often I'll just throw out random thoughts about what I might be wanting to do, might be thinking about doing, and kind of pull a couple suggestions out. And kind of like, for a reason, because I, I think it was uh, the night before I was kind of... Uh, because I mentioned in the last update I'm getting into the realm of laser discs and I was kind of thinking about random titles and stuff like that and uh, some some titles I'm going to get into something here very soon but stuff that uh, maybe a better quality version of a film that's on DVD or a different version or something like that because uh, there's a film that I want to review that is a thriller that's a very prominent one that really is a fantastic film that's not been given the proper the best treatment on home video here in the states and everything because company doesn't care but uh basically I'm, I'm saying let's just throw it out there i am interested in doing a review of the film the hitcher which uh got thinking about it and like thinking about well man because the, the dvd quality of the one they put out here in the states is bad it's a bad transfer even though it's anamorphic it's a really bad transfer and unfortunately the only special edition we've ever gotten is in the uk but I don't have a region-free player to import the thing and watch a better version of it, get some special features. But I did listen, bought a four-year-old podcast on it. Uh, guys at the Projection Booth did a nice episode on The Hitcher talking with Roger Hauer and director Robert Harmon. So I was listening to that, uh, trying to keep it in my mind the last couple of days. So uh, that's the film I'm kind of itching to jump on. And just hopefully I keep that interest going to get it going and everything. But uh Going with the sci-fi stuff, I had something that uh, I've been throwing around a little bit because uh, the first year I was doing all the first Mac video reviews and everything, I the first franchise retrospective I ever did was on the uh, Star Trek original series cast films, the Star Trek 1 through 6. I did a full like half an hour video covering all six films. We kind of break that down. I'm talking about each film about for about four or five minutes on average and whatnot, but... Uh, Toying around because it is the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. I keep one. I've been thinking about it since the beginning of the year to do something Star Trek related, and uh, I was thinking about doing a standalone review of Star Trek IV since it's the 30th anniversary of that film. Came out in '86, same as The Hitcher. Uh, <laughs> I was treated out something about The Hitcher. HBO gave me my damn Blu-ray, but anyway, they anyway on that. Uh, I'm just been toying around since the beginning of the year trying to think about something to do for Star Trek. It's like, I don't like doing like, I'm not big on like uh, top 10 Star Trek episodes or something like that. I'm not, a good, I'm not terribly good at the ranking system stuff. I just don't find it terribly as uh, satisfying as I like to because I've tried to do it with the past and they just never panned out very well. They get too rambly, they're too without direction. I'd have to script the whole thing. I have to do a lot more like a uh, some other people do stuff. You have to do a lot a little more scripted, more direct, and I just feel like I don't want to do that. And plus, there's hundreds of episodes of Star Trek out there. I'd never be able to compile a list. Long and short of it is that I turn around with the idea if I can get fresh enough thoughts about them to possibly do individual reviews of at least the first six Star Trek movies. Because uh, certainly there are certain things I want to say about different movies. Certain things I want to express, and also, that first franchise retrospective was very much the dry run going forward. And it was okay, but obviously I cut a lot of stuff out of it. Try to keep it as short as possible, but now obviously I've done stuff like the Final Destination franchise retrospective, which ran a full hour long. I've done other franchise retrospectives, I think, that have run quite long of that. I the Elm Street one ran about 45 minutes, so the Star Trek ones... I don't want to go back and just redo the exact same video again. I'd prefer to just go ahead and do individual reviews of certain movies. Just go through them one by one if... But it's also the thing, like, I don't want to start off the series and just, like, after, like, maybe one or two of them, I just kind of just never get around to them because, like, like the Rambo thing. I did the first three films and I kept saying I was going to do the fourth film. I got the Blu-rays. I get to watch the movie. So it's like, uh, it's one of those things. I don't want to start a series. I don't feel like I have the ability to complete it. So, something that's keep throwing out around in my mind is just like, I want to jump ahead and just we watch Star Trek The Motion Picture, which I did a few weeks ago, whatnot, when I still had my Netflix, watch the theatrical version, but I still have to watch the director's cut and everything. But uh, 
blah, blah, blah. Just some ruminations flowing around my head. It's like, I want to do something Star Trek related for the 50th anniversary. I'm just not sure if what exactly is the right thing. Because also, they got the uh, Rathacon 4K restored uh, Blu-ray coming up soon. In a little over a month's time. So it's like, if I did motion picture, I'd have to wait a little longer than I'd probably like to to do Rathacon. And see how things go from there. Because uh, at least what the thing is, uh, May will probably be a big month. Because you got bookend with uh, Cap Captain America and X-Men. June, usually, typically, not a lot of stuff comes out new released in June that I end up going seeing. So, usually it's a month where I just need to find something else to review. So, if I could get, if I could do motion picture and then a month later do Wrath of Khan, then do Search for Spock Voyage Home. I could probably get it done, but it's all, it's all complicated shit. But, uh, what I have in my hands here is that, uh, I did mention on the last video that after... I had yet to get the blue, the uh, sorry, not Blu-ray, but the laser disc player. The first one I got uh, didn't arrive fully functional, and thankfully I did get the full refund. Everything went smooth and clear, so no problems there. And I went ahead and, amongst that, I did go ahead and purchase another one, which is a Denon, which is basically a, uh, I believe it's like a Pioneer D five one five in a different shell. So basically the same thing, just a different brand name slapped on it. And uh, it's yet to arrive. It was supposed to arrive today on Friday, but apparently from the tracking of the fact that the mail truck just drove by not long ago, it's delayed at least another day. It's like, damn it. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to getting it today. Is, uh, even though I said in the last video I was not going to buy anything else, not going to splurge on anything until I got the player, make sure everything worked right. This was kind of serendipity in a certain way. It's like it just it, it happened to do it because I was looking at a... Um, I was following a couple of eBay auctions, then I decided not to go for the one uh, that was ending soon, because whatnot. <laughs> but then, clear them all out of my watch late watch list, and then I went to a store, because uh, this is all random happenstance, where I just started dating, was going off in different directions than I intended to. And, uh, well, the fact of the matter is, because I said Laserdisc was pretty much the thing I was getting for, for editions of films that do not exist on any other format, this is the director's cut of Scream. Never been released on any other format except for like some DVD in a foreign country somewhere. This is a slightly altered version of Scream. And it's like it's like an extra couple of seconds of footage, but it's like something that kind of it's kind of prized. Because like it has another com totally different commentary track on it between Wes Craven, Kim Williamson. It was like I came across this. I came across a nice stash, a nice uh, stash of uh, laser disc at an, at a uh, disc replay much further away than usual. But I uh, came across and it's like I just I saw a number of titles that were pretty good. They had a they had like a box set of the African Queen. They had uh, Jurassic Park. They had the Faces edition of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi for about sixteen ninety nine. So it was a good stash of stuff. It was like. Of all the stuff they even had, they had a few other things that kind of slip in my mind, but it's like there's some good stuff that I, that I would generally would enjoy to pick up at a certain time. But this was there, and it's like it just, I, it just, I, I mold over, and it's like this, this cannot be a coincidence. The way this day is completely gone right off the rails and gone a completely different way, and it ended up with me at this place, and they had the exclusive widescreen director's cut of Scream. I figure why the hell not. It's, it's something that uh, always kind of interesting in the back of my mind to eventually see it. Because, like I said, because uh, Disney at the time owned Miramax and Dimension Films and everything, and ultimately they decided they were not going to release anything that was unrated. So this only got a laser disc release. It's never been released on. I think there's like some erroneous print, uh, erroneous uh, releases on other formats that have some additional footage, but in general, the unrated director's cut has never gotten. It released on DVD, on VHS, on Blu-ray, nothing here in the States. I think there's, like I said, there's one foreign release DVD, probably Japan or something like that, or somewhere in Europe, but as the only other coincidence and other incidents of it, this is, uh, and also you can tell this, this this came in this like kind of real nice bubble wrap type of thing, and when you take it out, it's a, it's a very nice put together thing. It's kind of a nice glossy um, finish on this, and it's a, uh, <clears throat> just uh, one disc, two sides, so uh, that'd be kind of nice. And uh, so there you go. That's kind of nice. And that's the only media pickup I've had this week, so I've been kind of laying low on that. But it's like, 
I just had to. It just like it was too much of a coincidence to uh, to just not do it. Cause like if ever I was like I get back in like a week from then, if I said okay now I'm gonna go now I want to buy it now that I have the di now I have the player and everything works right now I'm all giddy and everything and it's like okay I'm gonna get get this, get this like one. Why am I gonna pay more money to drive all the way back out there with fuel and everything, or go back on eBay and pay even more money to get this from another seller? Just get it. Just get it. If things end up don't working out, you can still sell it for a good amount of money. So this is nice, and it's a. Uh, it's, it's not gonna be any uh, loss of quality from the DVD I have because my DVD version of Scream is non-anamorphic, so. It's the same deal and just get a few extra beats of footage and an entirely different commentary track that I've never heard before. So uh, a little bit more gore in it and everything. So they had to trim this stuff out to prevent it getting like a NC-17 rating or whatever it was. So it'd be interesting. It's like it's a film I do like. I kind of toyed around with maybe reviewing it last year or whatnot. But uh, had a lot, you know, Forever Horror Month didn't quite did go along on the pace that I wanted to. So uh, it's something I have to figure out this year. But uh that's all I got for you guys at this point in time. A little shorter than usual. But, uh, like I said, kind of rumin ruminations about the uh, doing the Star Trek reviews and thinking about stuff. It's just like, I don't want to... Because uh, it's one of those things that Star Trek is just something that's been around for me for, like, 23 years or something like that. I've The, the first episode of Star Trek I ever watched was Next Generation Relics because it had Scotty on there. It's like it seemed like an interesting thing. And it's like... Star Trek was already in pop culture. Next Generation always kind of started seeping into pop culture at that point. So it's like, I think I watched it on like a, like a rerun on Sunday night or something like that, or Saturday night. And just like, that's that was my inroad to it all. And then uh, I think it wasn't that much lot, much longer that I saw uh, Undiscovered Country on cable in, Jan in a January month or whatnot. So uh, all these things just kind of poured in there. And uh, it's kind of nice. Early 90s, I started getting into all that type of stuff. And uh, so it's been around for so long. That's why I'm saying that I've established so many thoughts about these films that I would have to revisit them to make sure I have something fresh to say, not just for myself, but apart from everyone else has already talked about these films ad nauseum for so many years. I have to have something that I, that feels personal to me, my own personal feelings, my own personal opinion that feels more distinct and unique in a certain way. So can't just spot, spot out all the trivia and whatnot and feel like that's going to make it a full review. I have to feel like it's satisfying for me. If I'm going to tackle at least six films, i got to have something more there. So, uh, sorry I'm still going to come bat around, but I'm sure eventually I'll rewatch the director's cut of uh, Motion Picture. Because it's, uh, before, I mean, I won't give away much, but it's not a film I hate. It's one of those films definitely you have to be in a certain mood to be watching. You're not looking for something that's too bombastic, obviously, but it's like something you kind of want to be in a certain mood to watch it and appreciate what it has to offer in the sparse points that it does. So, uh, we'll see. Not going to say I'm going to be doing it, but uh, we'll see how things go. So, uh, and Captain America Civil War is coming out this coming week and everything. It's like, everyone else in the entire universe is seeing this movie before I even have a chance to see it, to review it. And just like, it's seeming like, I mean, the critics got the same thing like three weeks ago and it's being released overseas. So it's like everyone else on YouTube that I follow has already posted reviews of this damn movie. By the time I get to it, it's going to feel like such a post facto type of thing that I've only seen. I mean, obviously, when I see the film, I'll have probably passion, few points to say, and I probably will shoot a review of it. But right now, it seems like I'm kind of like. Uh, way behind the curve here because I have to be like the last person in, in the YouTube sphere to actually see the damn movie and produce one and it's like uh, I'm going to see the movie on Thursday night and then the next day I've got to work like a six or seven hour shift so I probably won't even have the thing posted until sometime Saturday so it's just one of those things guys so uh, just let, let you know that the Civil War review will come but it'll probably be a little later than usual for the new release stuff so I just uh I requested the day off, and then I ended up having to take on Friday instead of that, so otherwise I'm going to lose hours. That's not good for my bank account, which uh, thankfully after all this uh, shuffling of stuff around between the laser disc players, buying and refunding and buying again and everything, everything's kind of settled back into a, a better state than I thought it would, so I picked up a couple extra hours last week, and that seems like it helped out a little bit here and there, and uh, got a new client for probably a potential acting reel, so... Uh, 
things are looking okay at the moment. So anyway, uh, if I had anything more to say about things, I would. I did mention, uh, considering Star Trek or anything, I've been also listening again to the Mission Log podcast, which is fantastically entertaining and insightful. It does give a few different viewpoints on things, so I really was trying to listen to a couple of their, episode, their episodes on the films to try to spark off a few other ideas, and a little bit here and there, mildly and whatnot, but... I'm still trying to pull things out here and there to see if a review can really kind of stimulate something a little bit deeper, a little bit different in me. So we'll see how it goes. I don't want to make a review that feels like the same old thing. So there we go. Before I go rambling on and round and round in circles. That's all I got for you guys at this point in time. And hopefully the laser disc player will be here on Saturday. I'll be able to enjoy it. Maybe I have to do a little bit of uh, well maintenance on the thing to get it make sure it works. Grease up some things. We'll see how it goes once it gets here. See how things functions. Hopefully things will go okay. I won't have to deal with anything more. So anyway, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for uh, hanging around. And uh, if you haven't already, I had a, posted another Blu-ray news video earlier this week. Talking a little bit about Labyrinth 30th Anniversary and uh, full specs on Deadpool. And a few other interesting little titles that you guys might be interested in. So short video. Check it out. And uh, might be, we'll see how that rolls out in the next episode. So, see what other news uh, trickles down the road and everything. And uh, I'll do another Blu-ray news video when the uh, flood of information and Blu-ray news hits a peak again. So, uh, thanks guys for watching. Take care. Follow me on social media. Links in the description below. So, take care guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.